So if you're like me, you bought a gamer laptop with a nice processor in it because you wanted to do audio work and then you found out that it couldn't perform well for audio and it drops out constantly and it totally ruins your creative flow and it makes you really frustrated and you can't use it. So you get latency mon, you do a latency test and it's all fine until acpi.sys pops up and then it says your system seems to be having difficulty handling real-time audio and other tasks. Yes, that is very true. If you go to the drivers tab you'll see ACPI has the highest execution time in milliseconds and that's 1.8 milliseconds. 1.9 just did another one and that is unacceptably high because if you're running a latency that is under three milliseconds or so that's going to interrupt your audio stream and even if you have a higher buffer size it may still interrupt it depending on how high your CPU load percentage is. So I've seen this go way higher. I think I've seen it go up to seven milliseconds before. It'll just keep happening over and over. Luckily I seem to have finally figured out what to do to prevent this. So what you're going to want to do, go to the start menu and type device manager. That's going to open this up. What you're going to want to do is go to ACPI compliant control method battery, select it, press delete, press uninstall, uh, ACPI processor aggregator. I'm not sure if that one's necessary, but it doesn't seem to cause any problems. Intel dynamic platform and thermal framework. All of those need to be deleted. Intel management engine interface, delete that. And then I disabled Intel thermal subsystem. I don't know if that's necessary, but I can have that one disabled. And then all these Microsoft Windows management interface for ACPI. Delete all those. And that's it. Now, if you run latency mon again, ACPI should not pop up anymore. And the execution time should not go above one millisecond. I'll let this run for a few minutes. So as you can see, ACPI is no longer in the picture. Now a quick note about the um, battery device. When you delete your battery, it's going to get rid of your battery indicator for your laptop. Um, your battery will still charge, but you just won't be able to see the battery level. But I'm assuming if you're doing any music work, it's going to be plugged into the charger anyway, so don't worry about that. Um, by the way, if you want to restore your computer to how it was, all you have to do is click this blue button right here and it will automatically find all your devices and reinstall them. So don't worry about losing anything. Um, the other thing is you want to get this program called Throttle Stop. So we've got four profiles. Yours will have different names probably, but Performance, Low Power, Balanced, and Balls to Wall. So my balls to wall profile is set up to maximize my performance of my processor. Um, the key component of this is the speed shift setting right here and what you do is click on this and set it to a number between 0 and 255. If you set it to 255 it will slow your processor down as much as possible. And if you set it to zero, it will speed it up as much as possible. So I set mine to zero, and you can see up here my processor speed stays around 3890 megahertz. It fluctuates a tiny bit, but it pretty much stays up there. Um, if I set my profile back to my low power profile, 
with the number on 196. Then you can see the, the processor speed is jumping all over the place, but it's staying below a thousand megahertz most of the time, which is good if you want to save power and you don't need processing. But if you're doing real-time audio, you need your processor to be working as fast as possible. So, make a profile, select one of these profiles, turn on speed shift, and set the number to zero. And that, combined with the tweaks to eliminate the ACPI interruption, should enable you to have a better latency and less interruptions in your audio. The other thing I want to mention is the ASIO driver that you're using. I have a Behringer UMC 404 HD audio interface, and it has its own ASIO driver. Um, and the configuration window looks like this, and you can select, it shows your sample rate and your format and your buffer size. It works fine, however, I have noticed that ASIO for all, the generic ASIO driver, actually performs a lot better. I can get lower latencies and with fewer dropouts. So I choose to use that instead. And what you're gonna wanna do when you set it up is click on this little advanced button and then select your audio interface. So I select my Behringer UMC 404 HD and then select the appropriate inputs and outputs and then set your buffer size. And then in your DAW, there should be a way to select your sample rate, like Reaper has request sample rate right here, so I put 96k. And then you can request block size, this is your um, buffer size. It's the same as this slider right here, which I have at 256, and that works fine, so I don't use this in Reaper, usually. So anyway, ASIO for All seems to work better for me, for my interface, than the actual Behringer drivers, so I use that instead. And so you can see at the top I'm working at 96k, and I've got 256 samples of buffer with a 3 millisecond input and 3 millisecond output latency. I would like to get that lower, but I think this processor, this computer, and this USB interface can't really do much better. It can go lower, but at the cost of not being able to do a whole lot before dropouts start happening. This, I've in my short amount of testing I've done, works pretty well. A uh, quick note about sample rate. Most people will probably work at 44.1 or 48k. Just from the testing I've done, it seems to perform better at a higher sample rate, and it also brings the latency down. So if I put this down at 44.1, it's 6.5 milliseconds for 256 samples. But if I put it back at 96, it's only 3 milliseconds. Now, of course, the amount of samples you're processing and the um, sample rate of your device uh, they they play off each other, so it's not just like a straight up gain, but from the testing I've done, it does seem to perform better, more reliably, and with lower latency at a higher sample rate. I had been running at 192k, and I was getting latencies as low as 1.1 milliseconds in and out, but then it was dropping out when anything complicated would happen, like playing samples from contact and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's about it. If you do all those tweaks, you should be able to do some stuff. Uh, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions. Anyway, good luck. Let me know if you need any help.